Welcome, ladies and gentlemen, to NWA Power, October 29, 2019, episode number four. Uh, this NWA Power episode was pretty decent. It wasn't as good as last week's, but there were some great stipulations thrown in here. Uh, some championship matches are starting to form, uh, most definitely. Uh, one of which was the national championship. Um, within NWA. The uh, James Storm, formerly part of TNA, uh, is the champion, as the national champion. He has big interest in the NWA World Heavyweight Championship against Nick Aldis. So we kick things off with James Storm coming out, being interviewed, and just kind of giving his insight and how he feels that he should be the number one contender to face... Um, Nick Aldis for the championship, and that he has defeated Colt Cabana in the past, and that he has no need to have a championship match against him, where he should be more interested in having a match with Nick Aldis. Colt Cabana comes out and says, Hey, I did not lose that title ever to you. I went ahead and had a severe injury with my leg. I am fully healed. I'm ready to go. I am ready to compete for that national championship that you're holding on your shoulder. Um, one thing leads to another. Nick, Al uh, actually not Nick Aldis, Elijah, uh, Eli Drake comes out. He starts to become um, a mediator and just becomes the middleman trying to settle things down and get things into order, which I don't understand why Eli Drake is portraying that kind of character. He's not really that kind of person in... Any of the promo with TNA, he wasn't that kind of per, uh, person. He was more of a prick. Here he's a lot different with a cocky attitude at the same time. Why he's caring about all these other people and not caring about himself becoming a world champion makes no sense to me whatsoever and kind of puts him in the background, making him not seem that important. As if he's more along the lines like a person of guidance to other superstars within this roster. Seems a little awkward to me. Don't really particularly like it either. Um, so Nick Aldis comes out, because he hears his name being brought up about the world championship, and he kind of gives a little insight on who he, you know, who he could possibly face for his world title. He tells James Storm, look, Colt Commander never lost the title to begin with. He got a broken leg, and he has to be stripped of the championship and now he's feeling well. So how about this? Make a six-man tag team matchup. I get three of my guys. You get three of your guys. And then we go ahead and we fight. The winner gets a championship match. So if Colt Cabana wins, he gets to face you for the title. You don't get no world title shot. You win this match, you have to give up the national championship. This stipulation was very interesting. I did like it. It was very creative, out of the box, never been done before kind of deal. And I actually really enjoyed this because what they could have done is, well, hey, you know what? Instead, you want to go ahead and compete for my world title. I'm going to compete for your championship and have a champion versus champion, one or takes all type stipulation matchup now if they would have went with that i would have picked nick aldis to lose this matchup but he didn't call cabana picked up the victory and won in the main event by the way this tag team matchup i'll get into with you in just a little bit uh it was the main event of the show so that was pretty much the situation established here so i did like the little twist on stipulations here that they threw in um and it was very interesting. I did not ex I did not see that coming. So if James Storm won, he would have to drop the title completely, not be champion, and he would get an opportunity to face for the NWA World Championship. Very slick, very cool move by NWA Creative there uh, by Billy Corgan. Um, so now we move into our very first match. First match is with Trevor Murdoch trying to earn an NWA contract on their roster. 
So he's facing this guy, Joseph, Josephus, or some shit like that. I can't really pronounce the guy's name. He's not that great of a wrestler. Anyway, he's absolute trash. He makes Trevor Mur Murdoch look good. Trevor Murdoch wins this match in very short fashion. So that was pretty much it there. Not much to speak of of this matchup. Um, from that point, we did have a uh, small period where we had another uh, interview with Aaron Stevens, formerly known as Damian Sandow from WWE. He uh, starts talking about his acting career some more. He sounds more and more like The Miz from back in 2014 when he played his uh, stunt devil, whatever um, kind of gimmick that he portrayed and was reenacting everything that Miz did. It was very silly and stupid, and this is very similar. A lot of his in-ring work that he did during this uh, episode was very similar to Damian Sandow, which I did not like either. Um, <clears throat> so we go ahead and we get a little bit of a conversation from Aaron Stevens about certain things. He's telling that the uh, tells the um, the interviewer not to look at him anymore. He's not allowed to look at him at all. No eye contact whatsoever continuing on from what they've been doing since the get-go and then out of nowhere ricky starks comes out of nowhere and settles it to him that he needs to shut the fuck up and he ends up slapping him so hard in the face he makes him completely go away from the stage going all the way where jim Cornette was at the broadcasting booth very uh weird but okay but the, the slap sounded very hard and very vicious, may I add. Um, so eventually they had a matchup later on during the show. Um, so we move on to a tag team nor, uh, nor, uh, nor, uh, no disqualification match. Excuse my feckling up here. Um, yeah, it's a tag team, no disqualification matchup with... The uh, Dawson's versus the uh, Eddie Kingston and Homicide. This matchup was very solid. I actually enjoyed this matchup except for the ending. The ending made no sense. The wild cards. They are the tag team champions going in there. And this really was a matchup to determine a number one contender for who could get a shot for the tag team titles. And the tag team champions come out of nowhere, hit one of the Dawsons in the head, and then screws over Eddie, I think it was Eddie King, no wait, it was Homicide, and he screws over Homicide, and they get the, the Dawsons get the pinfall anyway, and get the one, two, three. Made no sense to me whatsoever, but for a very small studio, they managed to make this matchup look okay to me, as a hardcore match. They had some chairs thrown in. They did a lot of. Uh, they used the ring post to their advantage. So they did some creative things here. One spot. They uh, build a. They have two chairs. Sitting properly. Uh, you know sitting up correctly. And then taking a third chair. And kind of having a bridge. Between the two chairs. And then throwing Eddie Kingston. Through the uh, chair. Uh, that's bridged. And power bomb through the chair. That spot looked pretty badass. Uh, the Eddie Kingston and Homicide really got their asses kicked. They took most of the bumps in this matchup, which I don't I don't know why. Um, they did get some good chair shots in, but nothing to the extremes that the Dawsons provided on uh, Homicide and King Eddie Kingston. So. I mean, a decent match. It wasn't horrible, but the ending made no sense whatsoever to me. I mean, you're attacking one tag team, then you're attacking the other one and ha helping the original tag team that you attack win the match? I don't understand it. It makes no sense to me. Anyway, we move on to women wrestling. We have Marty Bell versus Ashley uh, Vox. This is a was technically a match of the determined... A number one contender for the women's championship and new and uh, NWA, and the NWA champion is Allison. Um, I think her name's Allison K. Yeah, Allison K. Who was a former Impact Wrestling Women's Champion in TNA. 
Um, so this matchup was pretty okay. I mean, it wasn't bad. It was probably better than most NWA women's matches from what I've seen in the last couple of months or so. I am not impressed with AEW's women's wrestling talent. Uh, they're not that great at all in the ring. Uh, so what these women provided was much better than what AEW has provided before in other matchups that they've had. Um, I mean, they're not, these women aren't catch cam wrestling experts or fantastic at, for any means, uh, by any means, but they were decent enough to me, at least to put on a decent match. Um, and Marty Bell actually lost to Al Ashley Fox by a roll-up pin sort of situation and gets the one, two, three, and that was it. So there you go. Um... Then we get Aaron Stevens uh, going up against Ricky Starks. And Aaron Stevens, formerly known Damian Sandown from WWE, really, um, he doesn't do much of anything different than he did in WWE as Damian Sandown. It was very weird. He had a lot of the poses that he used to do as Damian Sandow. He had the same exact uh, entrance attire that he had in WWE before they turned him into a mocking gimmick or being Mrs. Bitch. Um, but nonetheless, I mean, this was pretty much a copy and paste of Damian Sandow in NWA. So I wasn't too impressed with this. There was nothing unique about this character he's portraying. Except the same exact fucking thing. Um... His in-ring moveset was the exact same thing as well. Nothing was different or new about his in-ring work. Um, Ricky Starks, his matchup with Aaron Stevens wasn't that impressive either compared to what Ricky Starks did two weeks ago. Um, so that's a little bit depressing on Ricky Starks' part because he really could have had a good match here. I've seen him have a good match in his last appearance. And this second appearance was not impressive to me whatsoever. Um, so Ricky Starks, though, did pick up the victory and win this matchup. Then we had the six-man tag team match. This six-man tag team match had Ken, uh, Mr. Anderson, Nick Aldis, and Colt Cabana on one side. And then we had James Storm and the Wild Cards, who were the tag team champions, who later... Uh, earlier that same night interfered in that match this matchup was a very solid entertaining main event matchup that could have gone either way at the end of the day Colt Cabana picked up the victory by a Superman pinfall yes you heard me a Superman pinfall which basically means Colt Cabana jumps up like he's Superman getting ready to fly and then lands on his opponent's legs with his legs, pinning him to the mat as a roll-up pin. Very awkward and strange-looking pin I've ever seen in my fucking life. But the in-ring work was very solid. It flowed very well. It was entertaining as fuck. And it was a good main event. This episode was a solid episode. Not as good as last week's, but this week was still pretty decent. I have been following this show from its inception four weeks ago, and it hasn't been too bad. I don't see it ever breaking any major grounds, but it definitely has that 1980s type feel to it from when it was first starting out with WCW. So, they got the right idea. They're going to have an NWA um, pay-per-view on December 15th, which... I think I might be able to get, possibly, it depends on my finances and how much they're going to charge for the pay-per-view, but if on Fight TV, they're like 19 30 bucks, something like that, like $29.99, I may actually get it. I'll let you guys know as we come closer to that date, and if I have the finances, I will definitely let you know that I'll upload a video on that and review it and give you guys my insight on that situation. But at this time, that's pretty much all I have to say about this episode. It was pretty solid, okay wrestling, very quick matches. Um, 
good little storyline building very consistent by the way as well something wwe should learn um but very consistent storyline telling and definitely just dealing with championships that's all you need focus on the championships focus on the wins focus on the in-ring action and keep it simple if you can come up with something unique and out of the box then throw it in but i believe that most uh storylines that are creative and a little bit out of the box needs to be thought over before you actually throw it on the screen because you got to orchestrate it correctly to the point where it's perfection where it comes across good and decent to the audience where they'll get entertained by it and it doesn't seem like a worthless piece of hunk of shit sitting in front of your screen that's really all i have to say leave your comments and opinions down below hit the like button if you like the video and hit the subscribe button if you're not subscribed to the channel. And I thank you very much for watching and have a great night, guys. Bye.